likely that voters changed their views about these economic issues, but there was a big change in the balance of organized power and the role of money in politics beginning in the 1970s. We really trace a lot of these big changes, and they're really treme tremendous changes in the distribution of income in the U.S. Back to the Back Carter to admi administration. The, we, we talk about the Carter period, and, and it's an interesting period because Democrats have complete control of Washington at that point, and so you wouldn't be expecting to see a shift of this kind start to take place. But there's a tremendous mobilization of business that takes place beginning in the mid-1970s. And by the end of the 70s, uh, a much more conservative agenda, an agenda focused much more on deregulation and tax cuts for people at the top of the income distribution is, is already underway before Ronald Reagan is elected in 1980. So um, how did it, Washington turn its back on the middle class? Well, there are a, a bunch of different pieces of this. One of, the, one of the first things that we try to demonstrate in the book is that this wasn't just a natural economic development. A lot of people have argued over the years that Yes, inequality is growing, but, but that's because of technology, it's because of globalization and forces like that. And we stress that if you look at other you know, very affluent, successful economies, they haven't seen anything like the same kind of shift towards people at the very top of the income distribution. So we started looking uh, to see what other things might be going on besides uh, just those kinds of changes in technology or more, a more open, more global economy. And we kept coming back more and more to realizing that government and policy had played a big role. And some of the parts of that story are pretty well known now, uh, but, but not the magnitude of them. Financial deregulation is a huge part of it. Uh, 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 the tax cuts that have been very, very dramatic over a sustained period of time for people at the very, very top of the income distribution, really well within the top 1%. Uh, and also, we argue that, that Washington has essentially stood by while a lot of things have gone gone on in the private economy that have also shifted uh, income di distribution, such as uh, the really serious push against organized labor, which is the, the only real organized vo voice for uh, the economic concerns of middle America, uh, and changes in corporate governance that, and executive compensation that have resulted in skyrocketing CEO pay. Well, what makes the Obama administration different, or is the Obama administration uh, falling into to the same trap? Well, we think the Obama administration is different, uh, but not enough to fundamentally reverse changes that have been building up over a, over a 30 year period. Um, there are, as we argue in the book, there are real differences between the political parties. The Republican Party has been much more supportive, it's probably not surprising to most people to, uh, to hear someone say this, they've been more supportive of these kinds, these kinds of economic changes. Uh, Democrats have often gone along, though, and in some cases, uh, uh, financial regulation in particular, were, were quite supportive during a critical period in the 1990s when Bill Clinton was president. The Obama administration has taken some uh, important steps and tried to push and is currently pushing in, in the discussion over taxes uh, in, in a different direction. Uh, but every step of the way is difficult. There's a lot of organized opposition to anything that would push back the other way. Inside the book is a chart, the richest 1% share of national income, and you track it over the different administrations. You can see it going up, starting in the Carter administration. It comes back down during the Reagan and Bush years a little bit, and then goes, goes right back up during the Clinton and then the Bush years. What happens in the Reagan-Bush years here that it goes down a little bit? Uh, well, it, it, it tracks the business cycle a little bit, so it tends to be that if there's a, if there's a, a depression, a recession, uh, often that in the short run results in a, in a fall of the stock market, a fall, fall of, of some capital incomes at the, at the very top. Um, but the general trend, I mean, the, you know, by the end of the Reagan years, it's significantly higher, Reagan-Bush years, it's significantly higher than it was before. Uh, you know, the, I think the main thing that we would, would take away from the trend is that uh, there are zigs and zags, but all the way through, both under Republican presidents un and under Democratic presidents, the trend has been pretty steeply up upward. And, and how dramatic the changes have been r really deserves emphasis. Um, you know, it used to be that economic growth was very broadly shared in the United States. We weren't necessarily getting closer together, but everybody's growth was going up. Uh, you know, everybody was seeing a significant growth of income over time. Uh, but in the last 30 years, almost 35 percent of all income growth in the U.S. has gone to the top 1 percent of the population, and that which is actually more 
than the income growth that has been experienced by the bottom 90 percent of the population. Uh, and of course, the gains for those at the top, or parts, top parts of the top 1 percent have been even more dramatic. So it's just been a much more concentrated um, fruits of economic growth. You show from 1979 to 2006 average household after tax income, including public and private bench, uh, uh, benefits. For the top 1 percent, it has risen um, in 1979 to dramatically 256 percent to 2006. How were you able to figure this out? What, what, what sort of data are you looking at here? Well, we're using, we're using data that's taken from the Congressional Budget Office, and they look at, so it's, it's not just income, but also benefits that you get. So it takes government into account, and this is after-tax income that they're looking at. Uh, and again, the gains for the, the top 1%, so there you're starting at the bottom of, of that top group. You're talking about people who are making a little under $400,000 a year. If you move even further up the ladder to people in the top tenth of one percent, people who are making over a million dollars a year, the income share of that group in the population has quadrupled over this period. Um, their income has grown about sixfold. Uh, so the, the higher up you get in the stratosphere, uh, the more staggering the, the shift in income has been. 